Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am George Joseph. I'm a senior economist with the Water Global Practice at the World Bank. Since uh, I, uh, what I'm going to do right now is to present here some of our work where we use, which reflect how pub, uh, public health data, particularly cholera data, is being used to design some of the wash interventions and even prioritize and target the wash interventions. I think this is some of the quest some question. This is a question that came up yesterday in some of the discussions, and it would be relevant when we think about the short term and to medium to long term responses towards ending cholera all across the world. Now, since I have only f less than five minutes, I would be uh, and I have I have so many slides. I would skip some of them. Apologies in advance for that. I would be happy to discuss more when we, uh, uh, when we talk later. So um, basically we are looking at, um, so we are living in a world where, where, the, where there is a data revolution, where we have a lot of data from a number of sources is available right now, and a number of new methods have been developed to empirically understand how, what this data means and how this data can be used for public policy programming and implementation. And here I'm, pre I'm, trying to, I'm presenting some of the work that we, t we did in the case of Lusaka and uh, Harare. I'm not going into a lot of detail on the World Bank here. As you may know, w World Bank has been very active in the water supply and sanitation area. About $35 billion is, be is committed towards water supply and sanitation investments across the world. And most of these investments are, happen to be in in Asia, and, and some of them, in fact, in the countries in Asia and Africa happen to be cholera, cholera um, high-risk countries. So I'm not going into the details here on the cholera epidemic that happened in, um, in Lusaka as well as in Harare. We have discussed this yesterday. So I would skip, and these, risk, these are some of the risk factors that are typically, un typically um, understood as a, as a primary causes or primary uh, factors that determine or that affect cholera, which include water supply and sanitation, among others. So before we go into Lusaka, let me give a little bit of context. Uh, in Lusaka, we have a, the World Bank has a water supply and sanitation project, which is the Lusaka Sanitation Program which supports the Lusaka Water and Sanitation Company to provide improved sanitation facilities in certain parts of Lusaka. And this is sewer investment, this involves sewer investments in sewer networks, investments in on-site sanitation, and investments in, the, uh, in management and, uh, and institutional development in Lusaka Water Supply and Sanitation Company. So last year, uh, along with the cholera epidemic, the cholera crisis that happened in Lusaka, we had the, at the World Bank, we were thinking about a midterm review of the project where we were asked to, find, to see whether we can fine tune or we can reorient or restructure our investments so that we can have better impact or higher impact on cholera through our wash investments and see how this can be emulated in other, replicated in other countries. And this is what we, we have tried to do in this process. So there are three steps here involved in this process. First, development of a uh, Construction of geospatial wash and, uh, and other environmental variables. That's the first step. Second step is using that to develop a cholera predictive map of cholera. And the third one is to develop simulations, demulation, uh, simulations ex showing scenarios ex or depicting scenarios where various alternative combinations of water supply and sanitation investments can, uh, how, how much in difference, how much reduction they make in the cholera risk in different parts in the, in the city as a whole. So these are the three steps I'm going to go through very quickly now. So construction of the geospatial map. So we have a number of covariates that are uh, on that we look at a number of variables that, deter that determine the, uh, the, uh, the cholera risk. And, and, um, and this data is available from a number of sources. And uh, we have got this at high, very high resolution. And we created these high resolution surfaces. So we also have data from the Lusaka Water and Sanitation Company on the pipe networks, on, on the existing pipe networks and the potential plans they have in expanding the networks, the sewer networks, et cetera. So uh, now let me go, into, uh, go a little bit into the 
uh, uh, two examples here on how these covariate surfaces would look like. On the left-hand side, we see uh, a map of population density with unimproved sanitation on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, that is superimposed with the real cholera cases, and you see quite a bit of correspondence here. A similar scenario here, where uh, in the case of, uh, this is depicting the cases of uh, E. coli contamination in the Lusaka water supply and sanitation supplied uh, water network. And again, uh, on the right-hand side, you would see the, uh, it superimposed alongside the cholera cases, and there is not a lot, but some, uh, some correlation here as well. So using this geospatial cholera map, I'm going to a geospatial uh, uh, COVID, so covariate surfaces, we are going to construct a, co a predictive map of cholera in the city and of Lusaka, and this is how it looks like. So on the right-hand side, you see the predictive map, uh, and on the left-hand side, you see the actual uh, cases. Sorry, the actual cases are, are on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side, you have the, the, predict, uh, the predicted cases. So you see that there's a lot of correspondence and other, uh, other uh, statistics also tells us that the prediction is quite, uh, quite uh, good, I would say. So now what are we going, going to do with this predictive map? What is the next step from here? So here we are trying to analyze how we can think about the water supply and sanitation investments and how we can target these invest investments in the context, where, in the situation where we have a resource constraint. So, um, so we are looking at different options here. I'm unfortunately, with the, due to the lack of time, I'm not going to the details here. So there are investments in water supply in in providing wa piped water access in within premise pipe wa pipe water access, uh, drinking water access through public taps, uh, providing sewer networks and and providing sanitation on-site sanitation facilities within uh, for those people who do not have it. And again, we are exp we are ex exploring different scenarios. Given that we have an existing pipe water network or sewer network, whether we can expand it uh, within the 500 meters or, uh, or whether we can expand it to one kilometers around the existing network or provide it across the whole city. So these are the three scenarios, sub-scenarios that we are looking at. And here is how the results would look like. And as, you, as expected, the sewers perform very well, though they are very costly. If, if the complete entire city of Lusaka is to be sewered, then 89 to 90% of the risk of, uh, of, uh, of cholera cases can be averted. And um, next comes water supply, uh, water supply through, um, uh, through uh, on-premise pipe water network, and that also performs well, about 60% plus. And on-site sanitation is also doing uh, quite well. So, um, so overall, we see that wash investments independently have an important role. Now, what is important for, here, for us here is targeting. So given that we have limited resources, how do we target our in interventions? So, um, so in, ta in targeting, we are looking at the ward as a whole and try to see how much reduction in the risk or in the number of cholera cases is possible with a given investment and how and which are the wards that we need to take, we need to prioritize for that. That is the exercise that we are doing here. So over here, if you look at it, this is how we would prioritize the pipe water investments if we are to choose, if we have limited resources. The first 10 watts are depicted here. And as you can see on the right side, the impact of, uh, with, with, uh, by intervening in these first 10 watts itself, we are making a big dent into the cholera risk in the city. The same is the case for, uh, for the provision of, uh, of uh, or shared on-site sanitation facilities as well. Again, the same scenario here, we have decreasing returns after we reach around 10 watts, uh, 10 to 11 watts, we don't see a lot of returns coming out. So which means that with probably limited investments, with targeted investments, we can in fact reduce the risk of cholera in, uh, in Lusaka city. So this is the application, I'm not going to the details. So what, how did we use it? for the Lusaka Sanitation Project with the Lusaka Water and Sanitation Company. So different options were explored. One is a, is a reduced version, the one that you see in blue, where uh, we have, um, uh, because, of the, because of some constraints and cost overruns, um, the, a reduced version of the project was planned, and this is, the, this is how the impact would be in the city in terms of cholera. A slightly expanded version with uh, two, two, two uh, uh, sorry, the original version with the water supply investments 
water investments in what improving water quality and investment in improving water access. How do they affect the, the overall cholera, cholera risk? You can see that on the right hand side. And, and the last one, the green, which is the expanded scenario, that's also presented here. And this is an, one of them, and or in fact, one of these two will be choos chosen for the final implementation if, if the negotiations go properly. So in Harare, the situation is slightly different. The as it is the case of every other, um, there are a lot of local local uh, differences, localized differences across cities and places. And uh, in Harare, uh, we have a case. Uh, so I'm not going to the details here. But what is what are we going to do uh, differently here? Main thing is that we are trying to add mobility mobility patterns into it, making the model more dynamic. The objective of that exercise is to. That we hope will help us to better uh, to understand how the propagation of the disease will happen within the city. So that if we know how the disease is going to spread, then we can provide um, ex ante support in those areas or even the the cholera vaccines in places in advance. So that is one of the objectives, and we are still uh, continuing the work on that. Now the main messages. So as you have seen, these kind of approaches are possible, and this is, this would work. And, uh, and this is quite useful, this kind of geospatial approaches are quite useful for, uh, for planning our investments and targeting the investment decisions. There is uh, an increasing need uh, to enhance the surveillance uh, capacity across countries because data is ultimately, and data sharing is ultimately most important, and data is ultimately that helps us to, to conduct these exercises and many others across the world so that we can all learn from, from this. And finally, multi-sectoral coordination, as it is enshrined here, that is the key to the success that we are going to see in the coming years. So I would stop here. And ex once again, apologies for running uh, through the slides very quickly, but I'll be happy to discuss more uh, in person.